Today we're going to be taking a look at the DRL Race Vision 220 FPV Pro by Nico Air. It is an all-in-one FPV starter. Let's get it in the air and check it out. When I first got the Race Vision 220, my first flight was line of sight. And when you get an FPV quad, you always want to fly at line of sight first just to make sure everything is okay. And my initial line of sight flight, I really liked it. It does some cool flips, it has some cool auto features, and I'll get into that more in the flight reviews, but I was impressed by it. Then when I got into FPV with it, didn't like it so much. It's not the best FPV flyer. It is a starter. It does kind of remind me of my very first FPV quad. My very first FPV quad was the Esheen Falcon 250, and I really liked that when I first got it. And then when I started to get some other FPV quads, kind of realized that one didn't fly so well. And kind of the same story with this. It looks really cool in the air, and I do like flying it line of sight, but as an FPV flyer, I'm not so, not so into it. It seems to want to yaw. It seems to be very easy to yaw the quad while you're flying it. That's probably a transmitter issue. Could be a programming issue too. You might be able to program that out in Betaflight. I'm not sure. That is one of the nice features of this quad is you can plug it into Betaflight and adjust the PIDs and rates and things like that. And it does come with everything you need. It comes with the quadcopter, the transmitter, goggles, and you can also take the screen out of the goggles and attach it to the transmitter and you can fly FPV that way if you prefer. Even comes with all the batteries you need, so that's a definite plus also. But speaking of the battery, the battery for the quadcopter is proprietary. And I somewhat understand it. It gives, it provides a, a clean look to the quad, but proprietary batteries, they're a little bit of a con on a lot of these quads because people like me own a lot of lipos. So it'd be nice to just kind of swap batteries out into a quadcopter, but not with this one. It is a proprietary battery. I would imagine Nico Air will be selling extra batteries, but obviously it is an additional cost. And while we're on the subject of the battery, when I first started flying the quad, I would get just over six minutes before the LVC warning would kick in. And then after more and more flights, my flight time kept getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And now my battery doesn't seem to want to charge. So I'm not exactly sure what is going on there, if I just got a bum battery, or if it's a quality control issue, or if these batteries weren't ready for prime time. I've never seen this battery design in a quad before, so I'm not sure how much R&D went into it. The charging situation isn't an ideal. It takes about an hour with the included charger, and it's just a micro USB cable that plugs into the quad, and then you're gonna have to plug it into a wall adapter or a USB slot on your computer or something like that to charge the battery. This package is aimed at beginners, so most of the beginners are not gonna have a hobby grade charger, but those of you that do have a hobby grade charger, you know, obviously that's not the ideal way to charge your batteries. As I said, I do really like flying this one line of sight, so I'll kind of let the line of sight review speak for itself, but I never got a chance to fly in Acro FPV during my flight review, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and show you some DVR footage. It does fly in acro and you can do some acrobatics. It will flip and roll and it does okay. It's not a great flyer. It sort of feels like you're out of control most of the time. And I never had like a major crash with it, flying it in acro, but I was always kind of like expecting to crash, if that makes any sense. Kind of flew through a pavilion and it never really hit anything. But during the whole flight, I was kind of like expecting to have a crash at any moment. And as far as the acrobatics go, it does do the flips, it does do rolls, but it doesn't recover from them well. So if you're gonna be doing that sort of thing, I suggest you be in a nice open area, otherwise you might have some problems. Possibly with some tuning in beta flight, you might be able to improve your flight, but I never got a chance to do that. And possibly with some more stick time, I might've got a little bit more used to flying it acro. The camera quality and FPV signal is decent. You're not gonna be able to get a lot of range out of you. There is no visible antenna on the quad or on your FPV goggles. So I, I don't think you can expect to get great range out of it. I would fly it fairly close proximity to myself. And once you start to fly sort of out of range, the screen kind of gets like a white look to it. Everything kind of starts to go white, which I've never really seen that before. Usually it's just static breakup but once I would fly closer to myself, it, the picture would come back. 
Unfortunately, I can't show you any DVR footage from the actual monitor that is included. All my DVR footage is gonna be from my Fat Shark goggles because every time I would record something to the micro SD card, which is included by the way, the files were there, but I can't play them on my computer. They won't play on my editing software. They won't play on my computer. So I think the files are corrupted or something like that. I'm not really sure if I got a bum DVR or if I got a bum SD card or what the story is. The goggles do feel a little bit heavy on your face. So for smaller children or something like that, it might become an issue. They do kind of press down on your nose as you're flying because of the weight that kind of makes them dip down a little bit and it pushes into your face a little. And I think, I, I really think for smaller children, it might be an issue. You will hear my voice in the flight review kind of a little nasally because it almost like plugs your nose as you're flying around. It's got a similar design to something like the Isheen VR007s, but those goggles are much lighter than these and it wasn't really an issue with the Isheens, but with these, it kind of pushes down into your nose a little bit. But they do work. It's not a bad starter package if you're just getting into FPV. So as I said, my flight times were getting shorter and shorter and now my battery just doesn't seem to want to charge. So I'm not sure if it's the bum battery or what, but I was never able to plug it into beta flight and mess around with it. So I can't really speak too much about that. Also, you can use this with the DRL SIM, which is a free download. And the way to do that is actually plug your micro USB into the quadcopter, turn it on, and then turn on your transmitter and hold down the B button for five seconds. And that's gonna allow you to use the controller in the DRL SIM. Again, I didn't get a chance to do this, but it is what it says in the manual. Also, the A and B buttons on the transmitter are gonna work as trim adjustments. That's the A button. And the B button is going to be a video channel selector. And you can also do this on the monitor. So there are multiple channels selectable if you're flying these with other people. So if you wanna race your friends and stuff like that, you can switch channels so you guys aren't stomping over each other's feed. The package comes in at about 170 bucks. And if everything was working properly, it would be a pretty good deal between the FPV screen and the goggles and the quad and the transmitter, everything all included. But, I, you know, I had some issues with the battery, I had some issues with the DVR. So, you know, buyer beware, and you may even want to steer clear of this one. There are better options out there if you just want to buy a transmitter, buy a tiny whoop, and buy some goggles. It's probably gonna do you better than this particular setup here. Again, I liked it as a line of sight flyer. It didn't fly wonderful in FPV, but as a starter quad, not too bad. So why don't we get in the flight review and check it out. Let's quickly go over the transmitter for you. And there are gonna be three modes on this side and it has this little switch that kind of slides between the modes. There's an N and A and a P. The first one is the N and that is Nico mode. That's gonna give you you're gonna have throttle control, but then this is gonna yaw it for you and give you forward pitch and stuff like that. So it's an interesting concept for beginners, but I would say just learn to fly the normal way. You're gonna become reliant on this. I had a hard time flying it like this because I'm so used to flying just a regular quad. Then you switch over to the A and that's gonna be your standard quadcopter mode, stability mode, throttle, yaw, and pitch and roll. And then all the way over on the P, that's pro mode, that's gonna turn the accelerometer off and you're gonna be in full acro. So you're gonna to wanna to have some experience in that. The quad is not gonna self level. So beware before you get into that. Also on the, on the right side here, you have a one, two, and a three, and those are the rates. So one is gonna be the slowest, two is gonna be intermediate, and three is gonna be your most advanced. And up on the top here, you have your stunt buttons, and I kind of go over that in the flight video, so I'll leave that to the flight video. I'm gonna give you guys a line of sight demonstration with the DRL drone here. I actually like this one quite a bit, line of sight. It is really cool, has some nice features that I haven't really seen on a quad, and the transmitter's a little different. These, uh, a lot of stunt buttons up here on the top of the transmitter, so, and a couple different modes you can fly this in, which is pretty cool. So, I'm gonna set it down here and turn it on, on off switch underneath. Turn it on, it vibrates, the controller vibrates a bunch of times. 
think you give it the up down there like that, but it doesn't give you any sort of audible warning or whatever that your thing is flashing. And you'll see that the LEDs flash in the back here. And then when you give it the up down, they stop flashing. So it, it seems to kind of do that when you land it a few times. So I'm not sure if that's some sort of state safety feature or what. So a couple different modes here. There's like the Nico mode, which I haven't really flown in. I might try that, I guess. It's supposed to assist you in bank turns. Why don't we try that? I haven't even flown it that way yet. Some sort of like flight assist or something. Oh, it like funnels the quad for you. That's kind of, that's kind of strange. So look at this here. I'm not even sure I can fly this this way. <laughs> so I go forward and you go forward. And, so forward and backward is going to be forward and backward. Um, and then if you give it any sort of just like roll, it's going to funnel basically. I'm having a hard time controlling it like this. Let's uh, try to get back towards us here. All right, so let's let's show you that here. So I'm going forward and I'm turning. I'm just giving it some pitch and it's gonna funnel. So that's kind of cool. It's a little neat little feature. I'm gonna take it out of this mode though. Whoops, I put it in acro. I don't wanna go in acro here. So let's bring it back. And those are just like little switches here on the transmitter. So let's bring it in. We are in the lower right here. Flies a little wobbly sometimes at times, but it looks cool in the air. So this is the low rate in the stability mode. This one will fly full acro. Not the best acro flyer. I'm not gonna lie to you guys on that. Let's go to rate two here. So it's gonna get a little more aggressive in rate two. Looks cool in the air, you know? I like the way this one flies line of sight a lot. And it is a little yaw-y, I, I find. that. If you just give it just slight yaw, it's going to kind of turn. So I'm not sure if that's like a transmitter thing or if it's just the way this flies or what. Let's bring it in here and show you some acrobatics. So there's your flip button. That's this button that's the far right. And you push it, whichever way you push it, it gives you kind of like a stall flip, which is kind of cool. I've never really seen that in these line of sight ones. So it kind of goes upside down, stalls for a second, and then finishes its flip. That's really neat. I like that. Haven't seen that on any other quads. Let's see, this is the second button closest to the inside on the right. Push that, and it's kind of like a stall flip again. So I believe the, the right side is gonna be your flips. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool flips. Let's see if we can funnel. Kind of. Yeah. All right, bring it back in. And let's do this button on the left side closest to the inside. Push it. And it's gonna give you like a yaw spin type of maneuver, okay? Like a little pirouette. Do it again. So depending on which way you give it input, and this is the far left button. That's kind of spinning around there again. Let's do that again here. This far left button, I'm gonna give it right, or I'm sorry, left input. And it seems to gain altitude there on its own. I was not giving it any sort of input there. So be careful on that. It's gonna give us like a little altitude gain here. So let's push this button again the closest one on the left and the inside, push it, and it's gonna do like a yaw spin. And then it seems to just wanna climb after that. So definitely be aware of that. So that's your acrobatics. Here's full forward pitch in the second rate. Coming back. It tends to yaw a little bit, and I'm not sure if it's just the way it, this one flies or what but real sensitive on the, on the yaw. You don't have to give it a whole lot of input. Look at these clouds out here. This is a pretty nice uh, day. I'm liking the clouds so far. Let's do some more flips for you. Stalling. 
And let's go into the third rate here while we still got battery. And it gets pretty aggressive here on the third rate. Flies pretty fast. Ooh, we got some wobble. But going forward pitch. So you're probably gonna wanna turn this one slowly, not give it any sort of like abrupt turns. Cause then it tends to yaw. Or I'm sorry, it tends to wobble on the yaw there. Cool little flyer though. As line of sight, I really am enjoying this one. Does the stall flips. Lost a lot of altitude there. We might be going low on the battery. Not sure what kind of flight time we're getting out of here. Let's try to do a, whoa, whoa. I was trying to yaw it there and uh, do like a, trying to do a funnel there and it just kind of got crazy on me. So there you go, a little funnel. Whoa. So on this third rate, the funnels are gonna kind of wobble it out of control. Let's go back to the second rate here and see if a little bit more manageable on the funnel. So decent funnel on the second rate. I would say try to avoid the funnel on the third rate. It goes pretty crazy. So, you know, not a bad funnel here. Pretty tight. Will it go the other way? I imagine it will. See if we can get the sweet spot. Throttle, throttle, throttle. So not bad. So let's go back to that third rate and, do, and let's show you that here. So we're in the third rate and let's try to, I think what's happening there is the, and we're also, the transmitter's vibrating. So I think that means our flight time's gonna be up. Let me go back to the first rate here. So on that third rate, the uh, yaw seems pretty, yeah, we're totally done on the battery. So I'll have the flight time there in the bottom of the screen. I'm gonna actually shut this off. It does have an on off switch underneath there. Also your micro USB port and shut that controller off. Vibrating at me like crazy. Calm down, Mr. Nico controller. So let's pop this battery out here real quick. This is proprietary battery. One of the cons I would say on this is definitely this battery. You're gonna have, uh, it's a two cell 500 milliamp hour battery and you're gonna have to plug your charging cable in here and charge while it's plugged in there. So a little bit disappointing on the proprietary battery. But interesting flyer line of sight. It has some really cool features on this transmitter that I haven't seen on too many other quads or really any other quads. So I'm liking this definitely as a line of sight flyer. It flies okay in FPV. And why don't we get into a little FPV review now. This is gonna be the FPV flight and review of the DRL drone by Nico Air. We got our quad, we got some goggles here. Also, I'm gonna be recording on the Fat Sharks, the DVR, because I've been having some issues with the DVR in here. I think it possibly could be the SD card. Might wanna switch this SD card out for a class 10. I don't know, the files have been corrupted as I've gotten them on the computer. And of course, we got our transmitter here. So this quad is not necessarily the best acro flyer or even FPV flyer, but we're gonna give it our best shot here today at the park. A little bit of windy too. So well, we'll see what happens. Okay, we're all bound up. We got both sets of goggles recording on the Fat Sharks. So the DVR you see is going to be the Fat Sharks. And we got a nice picture in here. A little bit heavy, the FPV goggles here, but you can definitely make it work. So we're gonna be flying with them today. And we're gonna go up and let me do, uh, we are in stability mode in the second rate. That's good for me. So let's go for it. Here we go. And we'll just see what we can do. A little bit of wind here, pushing it around. Flying around, I'm getting a little bit of break up here just on the other side of the playground. A lot of metal over there, so it is what it is. We'll come back over here and back around. I mean, definitely doable in stability mode here, but flying in an acro is a little bit tricky here. 
And one thing with the FPV, it's a little bit difficult to change your rates and stuff. So I might want to bump this up to the third rate. We're getting a little bit of wind here. So let me go, I'm actually gonna land it here and go to the third rate. So I'm just gonna land right here on the ground and go to our third rate here. And the controller does vibrate when you switch modes and stuff like that. So that's a nice feature. Also as an LVC warning, it will vibrate for you. And that's kind of important because you wanna know when your battery's getting low. So I'm not gonna get too crazy with this. It's definitely not the best FPV flyer, but as a starter FPV, not, not terrible. I've definitely flown unflyable FPV quads. So this one's definitely flyable. Kind of uh, a little happy on the yaw. That is one thing I have noticed. So we are in stability mode here on the third rate. There's also Nico mode, which is gonna kinda, let's see if we can go through this. So yeah, I mean, whoa, whoa, a little bit of wind, but I mean, overall, it's not the best FPV flyer. The range isn't so good. Let's see if we can make it to, I'm um, static and out there. Okay, we came back. That's the other thing is I don't see any visible antenna on these goggles or on the quad itself. So I'm not sure, you're, not, you're probably not gonna get the best reception in the world. I'm already getting an LVC warning, I think. What's up with that? I'm gonna fly this around a little bit. We're gonna go straight till it won't let us fly anymore. A little bit of breakup. So I don't know, maybe I'm having some sort of issue with the charge here. That's the other thing with these proprietary batteries is you're kind of out of luck as far as multiple flights. But you know, I was getting longer flight times out of this, so I'm not sure what exactly is happening here if it's just not taking the full charge. But it definitely seems like I should not be getting LVC, an LVC warning yet. Whoa, got a little close to the slide there. Got a little close to the slide. I don't even think, it, it won't even flip now that it's on LVC in stability mode, and I'm not gonna show you any acro. I'll probably roll some FPV footage of me flying this in acro. It's definitely not the best acro flyer. Flies real heavy, real wobbly. Ooh, ooh, can't see well. There we go, back. Static, really static there. So the whole time, ever since I mentioned it, it's been vibrating. So I guess it is gonna give you a long LVC warning. Maybe it's wrong too, you never know. Maybe it's just got like a weak signal and it's thinking that the battery's getting low in the quad, I'm not really 100% sure on that. But as you can see, we are flying this in stability mode and it is doable. I was able to, so there we go, that's gonna be the end of our battery. So, I don't know, having some sort of issue with the battery here. I'm gonna go get that, I'll be right back. So my honest opinion of this guy is I'm having some issues with it. The DVR doesn't seem to work in the goggles and I'm getting a real short flight time before I get the LVC warning. So I don't know, 170 bucks is pretty steep for something like this. It does come with everything you need for FPV, I will give it that. I do like some of the features it has with the auto flips and the Nico mode with the assisted banking turns is kind of cool. But, you know, I want a longer flight time. I'm not crazy about the proprietary battery. Transmitter, it's doable, but it has kind of like a weird you know, I'm used to a different style of transmitter, like a hobby grade style. But as far as the quad goes, I like the look of it. I like the adjustable camera. Lens on it's nice, definitely flyable and FPV, wide angle, and it is adjustable. So, I don't know, it's kind of uh, iffy. I guess if, you know, you're spending your 170 bucks, you wanna get something that's quality and really works well. So I'm not sure this does that. So I guess buyer beware with this one. Maybe it's a quality control issue. Maybe it's their first foray into doing this sort of thing. But Nico Air has been around a while. So I don't know, guys. You might want to steer clear, buy a tiny whoop and some Ishin goggles if you're budget conscious. But I would say just, just go with the Fat Sharks. You won't regret it. And, you know, these ones, these goggles are definitely they work and 
They're flyable, but not super comfortable. They're real front heavy. In the front here, you can you really feel the weight of the monitor. But as far as picture quality and reception, it's decent. You know, you're not gonna get great range out of it, but it is just a beginner quad. But I, I'm thinking it's more of an outdoor quad, even though if you put the prop guards on, it's not, a it's not gonna be a great indoor flyer. It's fairly large for indoors. So, I don't know. Maybe they should have gone a little more Tiny Whoop style size. I, I don't know. So, check it out if you want, but don't say I didn't warn you. And thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next video.